Hello, and welcome to World of Warbirds. I'm Brian Pierce. Hello, Warbirders. So this is part five in the series. So if you've just stumbled upon this episode, maybe go get caught up and then come on back here. So if in this series we've been comparing these aircraft to fledglings that died in the nest, the moon bat almost didn't even hatch, even though it's a damned interesting looking airplane and would have definitely been chosen by a 1940s Batman as his personal aircraft. It was submitted as a proposal with all the others for specification R40. However, it was passed over as too weird even for this request for thinking out of the box. McDonnell Aircraft, which at the time was just an aircraft parts manufacturer, decided to throw its hat in the ring for this fighter with a design burying a single Allison V3420 engine in the middle of the fuselage and geared to power twin wing-mounted pusher propellers in the back of the wings. I mean, it's not as crazy as it sounds. The Allison V3420 was a W engine made up of two of Allison's successful V1710 engines. Get it? Two Vs make a W? Welded together at a 30 degree angle and geared to a common shaft. So you've got the combined power of a P38 Lightning, but in one compact package. And by burying it within the fuselage, the thought was that it would have less drag and thus be even faster. But this aircraft scored 21 out of 23 proposals and only earned a $3,000 check from the Air Corps to keep it going. And uh, McDonald kept at it, coming up with a couple of new proposals that began to be a bit more conventional. They scrapped the pusher propeller idea and decided on using two engines one in each wing in a nacelle, and each driving a four-bladed propeller. Their Model 2A was revealed in April 1941, but the design was still pushing the boundaries, with McDonald trying to incorporate a laminar airfoil section throughout most of the aircraft, merging the back of the engine nacelles with the wings and filleting all edges of the fuselage and nacelles into the wings in an effort to reduce drag. And this effect definitely contributed to the aircraft's nicknames of Bat and Moon Bat. The promised top speed was to be 472 miles per hour. Finally, McDonald caught the USAAF's eye, and in September 1941, a contract for two prototypes was granted with the designation XP-67. The new fighter was to have an innovative pressurized cockpit and be armed with an impressive 6 37mm M4 cannon. Engines were to be two Continental 1430 inverted V12 engines with twin turbo superchargers. Many delays pushed back the moon bat from trouble in obtaining wind tunnel time to the design needing perfectly smooth laminar airflow over the entirety of the wings and other surfaces, to engine cooling issues, to obtaining the new experimental 1430 engines themselves. Finally, the first moon bat was ready for taxi trials by early December 1943, although the pressurization system and the armament was left out. On the 8th of December, the problem of engine cooling popped up again when the aircraft was damaged by fires in both engines. In early January, the Moon Bat took to the air for a six-minute flight before having to abort due to engine issues. It was becoming apparent that the Moon Bat didn't have enough power, and on the fourth flight, engine bearings were burned out when the engines were over-revved. The 1430 engines were very disappointing and were turning out about 300 horsepower less than promised. In desperation, Jim McDonnell began pushing for new engines for the Moon Bat. He suggested using a pair of Allison or Rolls-Royce engines turning the props with two extra Westinghouse turbojets in the aft nacelles. The Army rejected this idea. In 1944, things were gradually improving with the Moonbat, 
and test pilots reported decent handling but sluggish performance. However, as they tested the aircraft closer and closer to the stall speed, the aircraft refused to behave itself. It would buffet well above the actual stall speed, and its nose would tuck upwards during the stall. Test pilots feared that the stall spin characteristics would be even worse or even unrecoverable, so they just didn't go there. In September 1944, another engine fire caused an emergency landing and the sole prototype was destroyed. The second prototype was only 15% completed at the time. As the Moonbat was still underpowered, still had trouble with engine cooling, had maneuverability that was worse than the existing conventional fighters of the time, and was only able to hit 405 miles per hour instead of the goal of 470 miles per hour, the army decided to pull the plug, and that was that for the Moonbat. I hope you have enjoyed this series on American fledglings that never made it out of the nest. I know there are more, but those will have to wait for another day. If you have any suggestions for such episodes, please let me know. Also, please be aware that requests that come along with some PayPal support always have a better chance of being made first. Until next time.